Hello, my name's Kerry Lewis and I'm a member of the MrBruff.com writing team. Today we're going on a whistle-stop tour of the tenses. Verbs, mostly doing words, and verb phrases, mostly two or more verbs together, help to form tenses. The main tenses are the past, the present and the future, but these subdivide into other tenses, which give you more information about when particular events take place. It's unlikely that you'll need to learn all the tenses, but it's sometimes useful in analytical writing to comment on the writer's choice of tense and what this reveals about his or her thoughts. Let's begin by looking at how the past tense subdivides. There are four past tenses, and the first is the past simple tense, also known as the simple past tense. We use the past simple tense to talk about events or situations that have finished in the past. For example, first I slept, then I woke up, so we know that this first action here now is finished. After that, I ate my breakfast. And here, of course, we know that the action of waking up has also finished. So these events take place one after another. Then we have the past progressive, also called the past continuous tense. This shows an unfinished action in the past. For example, I was running in a marathon when I fainted with exhaustion. Was running is the unfinished action, so this is the past progressive tense. It was interrupted when the runner fainted. The next tense is the past perfect, sometimes called the pluperfect tense. The past perfect tense is for something that happened before another event in the past. For example, I slept well on Friday because I hadn't slept at all on Thursday. The event in the past is slept, but the event before that is hadn't slept, and that's why it's in the past perfect tense. The last past tense is a past perfect progressive, also known as a past perfect continuous tense. This shows an unfinished action that was completed at some point in the past. For example, I had been waiting for an hour when he arrived. He arrived is the past action. Had been waiting is the unfinished action before he arrived. So this is the past perfect progressive. Now it's time to continue our whistle-stop tour by visiting the present tenses. The first is the present simple tense, also known as a simple present. This describes something that you regularly do. It can be used with words like always, often, sometimes, seldom and never. For example, I always brush my teeth twice a day. As you can see from the timeline, this is a regular action and this is why we use the present simple tense. The next tense is the present progressive, also known as the present continuous. This shows an unfinished action in the present time. For example, Mum, this is a bad time to ring me. I'm running a marathon. Am running, the present progressive, shows that the action of running the marathon is still taking place. The person has not finished. Then we have the present perfect tense. Now this one's really interesting because it can be used in three different ways. The first is to talk about something that you've done or not done in your life. An example is, I've eaten snails many times. It's not important the exact times that this took place. The main idea is that you've done this in your life. The second use of the present perfect tense is to talk about something that you've recently done. For example, I have just finished. And of course the word just gives you extra information that it was in the very, very, very recent past. Finally, we use the present perfect tense to talk about something that started in the past and is connected to the present. For example, I've been a fan of rap music for two years. This began two years ago and is continuing now. The focus is on the finished result, the fact that the speaker is a fan of rap music. The last present tense is the present perfect progressive, sometimes called the present perfect continuous. We use this to describe something that started in the past and is connected to the present. 
The emphasis, though, is on the length of time in which the event has been taking place. For example, I've been scrubbing this floor for two hours. This began two hours ago and is connected to now. In the previous example, the emphasis was on the end result, the fact that the person was a fan of rap music. With this example, the present perfect progressive tense shows that the emphasis is on the two hours of scrubbing. Our final stop on our whistle-stop tour of the tenses is the future. Some people argue that the future tense does not exist. Instead, verbs, mostly doing words, and verb phrases, mostly two or more verbs together, show ideas, plans and probability. Let's look at some examples. Some of the tenses that we've studied can also be used to talk about the future. For example, the present simple tense can be used to talk about something that's arranged or scheduled. The bus leaves in 10 minutes. The present progressive tense can be talked about something that's arranged or planned. For example, the bus is leaving in 10 minutes. The main difference between these two sentences is that with the second one, you're imagining it happening in your head. This might be developing a feeling of urgency or panic. The bus is leaving in 10 minutes. Hurry up, quick, we're going to miss it. The future progressive tense emphasises an intention, arrangement or plan. I'll be thinking of you. We won't get the bus. Instead, we'll be walking to school tomorrow. A modal verb shows that something is certain or possible, and we can use modal verbs when talking about future events. The verbs may, might and could show that we're uncertain about the future. I might not go out tonight. We can also use should if we think something is likely to happen in the future, but we're not quite sure. For example, the film should finish by 10 o'clock. Will is also used to make a prediction, an offer or a promise about the future. Here's a prediction. It will snow tomorrow. Sometimes, by the way, the use of the word will is called the future simple tense. Finally, we have going to, to talk about plans or intentions. For example, they're going to move to a new house. It's quite interesting to see how the verbs and verb phrases reveal a range of ideas and attitudes towards time. If you're interested in exploring verbs and verb phrases in more detail, I've made separate videos and put the links in the description below. In the meantime, this is the end of our whistle-stop tour of the tenses. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to buy a copy of Mr Bruff's Guide to Grammar, the link is in the description. In the meantime, please like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you in the next video.